Okay, welcome back. This is a, a few days later. And I think the last time we talked, I ran into that problem with the turn signals and the front turn signal adapters that I failed to order. And I'm gonna go over what I had done to remedy that situation <clears throat> and then bring you up to speed on, on what's happened with the bike since then. Uh, I'll start off uh, just showing you the bike now. The, it looks a little different. So I, I put it up on my lift and uh, of course the wheels are off. I, I did buy a set of, of German uh, sport tires and I don't know if I pronounced this right. These are called Hyden now, and I purchased these from Hickox in England, and I'd uh, I mean, they look really nice, and I verified with them that they fit this model. Um, you do have to purchase a, uh, a kit to raise your front fender, you know, by about an inch to get that extra clearance and but uh, a little backstory on mounting these these were a bear to mount I tried myself and I tried uh, tried to have a guy I mean there's a million vulcanizing shops here in the Philippines and uh, he he couldn't do it marring the edge of the rims with the tire spoons I know there's videos out there with, uh, I saw someone do it, but they had rim protectors. Uh, but I don't have any rim protectors. I did put a set on order. But I have to tell you, even with the rim protectors, with the spoons, barely move these things. So we were looking for somebody with a machine specific for motorcycle tires, large, large bike tires. And I was skeptical because I didn't think there was gonna be any in, in this area. But lo and behold, we find a guy right down the street, right across the street where I have coffee sometimes, and he had a, a purpose-built um, pneumatic tire machine. So he, he did the, the mounting of these tires. They're gonna go back on the bike shortly. But I think these tires are gonna make a big difference as far as the ride height and and be able to handle the roads here in the Philippines a little easier. And so back on back on the turn signals, since I was on hold doing the front, I installed the rear. First thing I did was remove the, the secondary fender extension here. It's, it, it is a practical, but it's very ugly. Uh, it just came, came down all the way here and it has a big ugly reflector on it. So I removed that, and then you have two holes here where it hooks up, so I just put the, the bolts back in there to clean that up. And then uh, this is the OEM taillight mount, and Tech Bike Parts provided the rear brake light and turn signals. These are all LED and I didn't need uh, any lengthening adapters to turn to, to put these on so after some trial and error here I got everything set I had to you have to screw uh, I mean drill mounting holes in your OEM bracket to mount the taillight and I like the way this is I like the way the turn signals are close in there and they are nice and bright. Tail light is nice and bright. So I accomplished that while I was waiting for my parts for the front. And I was also waiting for a big order from Hickox, which got held up in customs. So that was, that was delivered. What I ordered from them, uh, the main things was a, a Fuel X, uh, programmer. This is the Fuel X Pro, and 
and I've already done the plumbing of the wiring and mounted that. Your wires come up under the seat and under the tank. And then you have adapters here. It's basically a Y adapter for both of your oxygen sensors to go through back through the fuel X and back into the OEM ECU. And I got a little bit more zip tying here to do, but these are, I'm leaving these here now uh, after I get the exhaust hooked up. So I got the that uh, programmer. I This particular, this is the Pro model is what they call it. And it, it allows you to select up to 10 different air fuel mixtures. So from, from one to 10, or I think zero to 10, uh, where zero is very lean and 10 is rich, very rich. So you can adjust this on the fly depending on your riding conditions and uh, altitude where you're at. <clears throat> where you're at. But, um, <clears throat> and, in, and if you go to level three, that is back to stock. So they recommend uh, in steps seven through 10 to, to maintain your, your a safe you know, air fuel mixture. Unless you're at a high altitude, you don't want to get too lean. So I've got that. I ordered also a, a USB power module that comes with a nice bracket. And this particular USB connector uh, is easy because there's an accessory power plug in the headlight that's not going to anything from the factory. It's just there for use. So it was just a simple matter of plugging in that USB right here for power. I purchased a couple aesthetic items too. Uh, one was this this is the oil fill port and instead of that plastic uh, plug it has this is an aluminum uh, temp aluminum plug with a temperature gauge on it and you can uh, without turning the plug you can adjust you know the orientation of the of the temperature gauge I had one of these on my sportster many years ago and I just thought it was cool so some of this I just bought for the cool factor. Uh, and along with the with these with these tires, I did buy the Michelin heavy duty inner tubes for those. I've got a list here because I might not remember what exactly I purchased. Uh, another aesthetic um, addition that I bought was they they made a, a nice steel um, oil cooler cover that will go on here. I bought some extra oil filters just so I have those around in case I can't find them here. And another big performance item that I, that I picked up was the DNA air filter. So this is kind of like a K&N air filter, but they advertise an amazing um, improvement of airflow above OEM and it comes with the cover delete frame so the OEM frame is a plastic cover here and it has this tiny little snorkel for airflow and I hear good things about this so I'm excited to see what this does in, in conjunction with the exhaust that I'll show you here in a second uh, another thing that I got that's kind of aesthetic and possibly uh, <laughs> a good utility is the uh, headlight grill. I've always liked these. I actually put a set of these on my, uh, I had a, a 68 Chevelle a long time ago and I added these. I think it just gives it a cool look. So I've got that. Uh, the last thing I think that I, that I ordered from Hickok is the air injection delete kit. It's already installed, but what was normally here is uh, an ugly uh, air, air injection from 
the air box to inject it into the exhaust you know, right before the header and you know, that's for emissions of course uh, we're dealing with here a, you know, a 650 twin so I'm not too concerned about any extra pollution coming from this bike this had like a like a manifold and then it had a, a thick hose that ran up all the way back to the air box and uh, there was a solenoid there that turns it on and off so the kit provided us um, a blanking blanking cap for the solenoid so the OEM ECU will think that it's still there so that that was the last thing that I ordered uh, with the exception of I bought a uh, emergency cable kit it's just this little tiny uh, looks like about the size of a can of chew and it has some slip-on cables in case you're somewhere and you break a throttle cable or clutch cable you know just enough to get home okay so here it is here's the headlight assembly is back together with my rock guard turn signals everything's nice and snug Let's see this I think it gives it a nice clean look this is the oil cooler This kit comes with the steel guard and some attaching hardware and rubber grommets. And this is actually a good time to do this because when I get ready to install the s, &S exhaust, I know that they, they want you to loosen the oil cooler and let it come forward so you have room to get the pipes up in there. So let's, let's partially install this. The oil cooler is attached with four bolts attached to the frame. can just move it forward like that. Got your stainless steel braided hoses here. So it looks like the guard picks up these two bolts holding the original equipment one on. So apparently it just replaces it. It doesn't go over it. Here's the difference. Here's the OEM, and it is it is steel, but it's pretty flimsy. And then this is the aftermarket one. A lot beefier. And feel precision. In there. So yeah, this just replaces the entire thing.
Royal Enfield in the Philippines. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks. <laughs>